What's going on, everyone? This is Brian Turner here with season two now. It's kind of crazy that we've gone into our second season of the No Stress Midwest podcast. Uh, I want to welcome everyone that, that has been a part of season one and that, that's here for season two. I'm going to welcome the new guests. Um, they just heard about it and wanted to, to jump on board. Uh, season two is, is going to be pretty awesome. I'm really excited for it. We've got an all-female guest list. Um, it's something that, that I'm, like I said, I'm really excited about to hear these stories. A lot of uh, professional players, um, coaches, freestylers. So we've got a lot. Uh, for season two, episode one, though, we're going to get started with Miss Carrie Roccaro. Carrie uh, plays for uh, North Carolina in the NWSL. She has had one heck of a soccer background uh, from her high school days to college to pro. Um, she's, she's got a lot, and uh, I'm really excited to get this going. So, Carrie, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm happy to be here. So, uh, Carrie and I, we, uh, we met through my friend Darren, who was a goalie there uh, a few years ago. And when I told Darren I was looking to get uh, some females on, you were the first person that he mentioned, said you would be perfect. Uh, we exchanged numbers and then like, I think we FaceTimed shortly after and like after we got off, I was like, yeah, she's it. I was like, she's gonna be perfect for it. Uh, so Carrie, thank you for, for being on. Oh, no problem. I'm like cheesing so hard. I'm like, oh, <laughs> thanks, what a compliment. But yeah, no, I love talking. So yeah, I have no problem talking about myself for hours. There we go. Well, that's good. Um, so let's get started. You. Uh, you, you oh well, you see my dog in the background a bit aria is going to be making oh, yeah. appearances. uh so the nwsl season is kind of over now right you just finished your last yeah. group uh matches so what 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 was that kind of like i know you said this is your last night right you just got back in from mm-hmm. orlando today yep just flew in this morning got back this afternoon had an exit physical and exit meeting tomorrow last COVID test tomorrow and that's it we're we're completely finished but it's crazy it's we were just talking about it at exit physicals it's been a whirlwind of a year we had like four different preseasons and we had the challenge cup in utah with the bubble and then we came back not knowing if we were gonna have a season and then we had the fall series and it was just four games no playoffs and then we weren't playing for anything, but then we were because Verizon sponsored the Community Shield and gave money to the first, um, first, second, and third place team. So it was that. just That's like cool. a lot, but it, it was super fun. I was telling my roommates, I was like, that was a great experience. And I would say I definitely grew a lot and it was not easy. The whole year was difficult, but right. the fall series was time of growth for sure. So you're saying you want to do it again next year? That's is that uh, what <laughs> repeating 2020. I don't know how oh, I could God. handle that. Yeah. That would be a nightmare. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, let's before we get too much into current, let's go back a bit. Okay. Um, back to little Carrie uh, in New York East. So was it Is- Islip? Islip. I- Islip. East Islip. East. Yeah. No Islip. one can pronounce Islip. that. Don't worry. I slipped uh-huh. to New York. Now, what part of New mm-hmm. York is, is that? Because I'm from New Jersey, but I'm South Jersey. Oh, you are? Yes. Yeah, oh, South okay. Jersey. So I'm from Long Island on the South Shore Long in Suffolk Island. County. Okay. Yeah. All right. Long Island. Huh? So mm-hmm. while you were there, high school soccer seemed to be, uh, I actually was looking it up and I just could not close my mouth at how much stuff you won. Uh, oh, you gosh. were ESPN <laughs> first team All-American. You were a two-time NSC NSCAA, now United Soccer Coaches, All-American Junior Senior Year, Gatorade High School Player of the Year, New York Player of the Year. The list, it, it really just kept going on. I had to stop typing it out. Uh, <laughs> but what was high school soccer like? What was what was club like? What was young? What was getting involved with soccer like in Long Island? Well, I don't know if people do this now. And I feel like, actually, I don't know if women or men play high school soccer anymore because of like the DA and all that type of stuff. But I was fortunate enough where we had the ECNL, but I was able to play high school soccer. I played from eighth grade all the way through senior year. So oh, wow. I was like lucky enough that they let me try out for the team and I made it. And it was, I mean, I was a lot younger than those girls, but that was awesome for me and definitely pushed me out of my comfort zone. 
Um, and I loved competing for my high school. Obviously, the soccer is not the best, and it's nothing like your club team. And mm -hmm. I was fortunate enough to have several good players on my team that went on to play D1, and then some girls who just were there for fun. Yes, but yeah. um, my best friends were on the team, and we actually, my freshman year, we went almost undefeated. We won um, the Long Island Championship and went to states like for the first time ever. And yeah, it was definitely something that I took pride in competing for my high school because they gave so much to me and they were so good with me and being flexible with my schedule and me missing classes to travel to play that I always felt like it was like my duty to give back and play for my my school and kind yeah. of show them like my appreciation through that. Cool. So with high school and then with club, which which do you feel had the biggest impact on getting you to college? Okay, so this is kind of a fun fact. My club coach is my courage coach here in North Carolina. Ah, Same guy. So yeah, that. when I was in eighth grade, actually probably seventh or eighth grade, he started like reaching out to my mom. Um, and she, at first, like, I don't think she told me at first because I was happy on my East Ice Club, club team and hanging with my friends and it was fine. But then I think eventually it hit the point where we were both like, okay, well, if you're gonna take soccer seriously, maybe you should go to this club where this great coach coaches. And I knew about him and I knew about the club. I knew they were the best that Long Island had to offer. And as soon as she told me that Paul was reaching out to her, I was like, I wanna go. So right before my freshman year of high school, I switched and went to that club, which had all the best players on Long Island in it. And the reason I am where I am today is because of Paul. Yeah. Um, he right. developed me, he pushed me, he, also was that person that kind of guided me through the recruiting process as I was going to college or going to pick out which college I wanted to go to. He was yeah. the one that contacted all the coaches for me and kind of just like was my little agent. I mean, you don't have agent yeah. back then, but he was the guy that the middleman that did all of that stuff. So I, I mean, he was awesome. And now I get to play for him here, which is now you get to play for him here. So yeah, what was the name circle. of the club team? That... Albertson Fury. Wow. Albertson Fury. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, so I also read that you played ODP as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and you kind of moved up the ranks in mm -hmm. that. Now- People don't do that anymore, do they? Well, so it's it's funny because I, I coach ODP. Oh, you and, do? Okay. Yeah, and the getting moved up is not as, I guess, the biggest way to make the- Make it, right. And all that that was the way to do it exactly. back then. You, you, you start you with- GA and you have GA, so- Right, okay, so yeah. Good you're already in there and right. then you're, you know, so it's different, but on the first season, I had a few, few guests who did ODP and that's how they made it. Like that's, that's how they made it, which I thought was really cool. So yeah, I'm fill me in a little about your ODP uh, process and, and what that experience was like. Yeah. When I was in sixth <coughs> grade, I tried out for the state team, just like everyone mm -hmm. did back then. And I made it and, I think my first year I was actually on the B team and it just like drove me crazy. I was like, I don't want to be on the B team, whatever. And then seventh grade, eighth grade, I made, I kept making the team and eventually I made the A team and started to like blossom and work my way up to the point where when we were going into eighth grade, we all went to regional camp at the uh, University of Rhode Island where we were like, <laughs> for anyone that's from region one, they would be like, oh my God, University of Rhode Island. That was like, the dorm we stayed in the dorms no ac it was just like a mess yeah um like good and bad memories there you're always just like oh my gosh regional camp yeah. um, so we'd go there every summer and i made it in eighth grade i had trouble i got on the very last list they would like post the list on the dorms i got on the very last list made it was pumped and then going into ninth grade i made the regional team again but then from there they took a chunk of those girls and invited them to national team camp in california and then, so they took 25 girls from each region, like the top 25, uh -huh. put us at Cal Poly Pomona nice. in California. And we Did just tried out. Was there AC in, in those, in those dorms? I, I feel like there was, I feel like it was a little bit nicer. Yeah. Um, nothing against URI, but yeah, no, I, I feel like my t time at Cal Poly, I was like, okay, this is like a step up. Yeah. Um, but from there, that was U14, like national team camp. The first one, there was a hundred mm -hmm. girls from all the regions. And I ended up making the first U14 camp got invited to the Nike friendlies at the Home Depot Center. And from there, just went U15, U17, U20, U23, and then all with the that's the it. Team, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what, what was it like? Well, and we're going to get into it a little more, but 
playing in the youth system, right? You obviously played, and before we we recorded, you were telling me you were on with some one of your friends who's who's pretty pretty big name uh, <laughs> soccer player. But like, what was that? I'm sure you met a ton of people. Are you friends with a lot of people from those youth camps? Anyone? Oh yeah. So are you still what... in the NWSL playing? Like, mm-hmm. you know, what's, what's that like? So you the more you get called in consistently you start to develop relationships with other people that keep getting called in consistently so some of my best friends are girls that are competing in the nwsl and playing for the national team now mm-hmm. um yeah it was so fun those are some of like the closest people to <clears throat> me because they were the ones that were doing what i was doing and their dreams were similar to mine and obviously i love my high school friends and my college friends but these people just got me in a different way they were driven right. the way i was and we were able to like relate to each other in that same way and be there for each other at camp when stuff got hard and yeah those are those are my people yeah i love it i love it uh so after <clears throat> excuse me so after that you then moved on and you went to notre dame which for people that live under a rock notre dame <laughs> has, a, has a very very good women's college program uh as i mean as well as with most sports uh but you went there you were named freshman of the year and Big East rookie of the year, which is like, I like I told you, as I was reading up on you, I was just like, oh my gosh. Uh, so what was college experience like? How, I know you said your club coach had a really big part of the recruiting, but how did you decide on Notre Dame over any other school? Um, how was your time at Notre Dame? Kind of fill me in on college. I was like going to interrupt you 30 seconds ago because you said anyone that lives under a rock, but I didn't know where Notre Dame was. Yeah, your jaws dropped. <laughs> I know. Okay. Uh, so I got an email or my parents got an email because I was like too young. My, my parents got an email. They were invited me for a visit and I was just like, oh no, I know where I want to go. I had like other plans. And my dad was like, let's just go because he wanted to go to a football game. And he, yeah, for sure. of and course I was just like, yeah. okay. It was the one trip I went on seven college visits. It was the one trip that my mom didn't come because I was like, I'm not going here. So right. you don't have to come. Yeah. Me, yeah. me and dad will go and make dad happy, whatever, whatever. I don't know who the coach is. I don't, I didn't know a thing. I was like, where are we going? So... <laughs> Dame, Dame, what, what? I've heard, what's yeah. I, crazy. So then we flew out there and <laughs> met, I met Randy and I fell in love immediately and was like, Oh my gosh. Um, Was obsessed with the campus, obsessed with the team. Randy was an angel. I had a friend that was visiting the same weekend. I I had, I knew a girl in my, in my club that was going there a year older than me. And it was the one school that I, one bought like apparel for, like when I was on the trip, my dad was like, it was the one place you bought something. I was like, I didn't even notice. I was just really cold because it's freezing there. Um, But then after that visit, every other visit that I had, was great but i always just was like go irish like in the back of my head um and i i had conversations with my parents about it and paul we like had went out to eat and discussed it and he basically was like you gotta go to notre dame yeah my dad said the same thing and i was like i know that was like the place i wanted to and and i i couldn't have gone wrong with any choice i made but i was just like yeah you that's a special place so you chose notre dame you're there for the four years five Three and a half. Three yeah. and a half years, excuse me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, so what was playing for them like? What, how was the, your three years, your three seasons there? Oh, so I played four seasons. I went, four seasons. I, okay. yeah, right. and then I graduated early. So, it, gotcha. I mean, it was right. amazing. The year I committed, they actually won the national championship, which was so, so cool. I was, I was actually, the game was here in North Carolina. I was able to see the game in person because um, we mm-hmm. had some like soccer tournament down here, our club. So then by the time I got there, my freshman year, we made the Elite Eight, which was great. And then I don't think we made it nearly as far as I got older. But, I mean, it was absolutely incredible. And we, we moved from the Big East to the ACC, so the competition yep. got a lot harder. Yeah. And it yeah. was yeah. it was so fun. Like, it really was. Like, you cannot recreate those memories of playing in that stadium and, mm-hmm. like, the locker room and the friendships and all like all of it you yeah it, it's incredible so what what was the big different biggest difference you saw with big east competition versus acc competition because you obviously have a lot of good programs in the acc um a lot of good programs in the big east as well mm-hmm. but you know north carolina duke 
Uh, those are, I mean, some some very big name program, Florida State. Uh, so what what was the, the biggest difference you saw in the, the style of play? Well, I think it was just that every week you had more consistency with in terms of like you were playing a powerhouse every single week. Whereas in the Big East, sometimes you were playing a, a team maybe that just like wasn't. Not a powerhouse. Yeah, like just yeah. not putting up wins. Yeah. And yeah. so like yeah. just all the teams you're playing are ranked and it's yeah. just. It was just different. It's like, okay, you're going, you're traveling down to North Carolina, you're playing Duke and UNC. Good luck. It's Number like, one and two, oh, right? Yeah, exactly. It's and just like State comes in, and then yeah, so yeah, and then you play Virginia Tech that right. Sunday. It's just like yeah. every game, you're like, oh my gosh, this could be a Final Four. And if you think about NCAA soccer, when you look at the Final Four, it's always probably Stanford or UCLA mm -hmm. and three ACC and teams, then ACC. and that's exactly how it is every single yep. year, unless there's some sort of like weird, crazy mm. upset where yeah. someone squeaks in there. Yep. But yeah, that's how it is all the time. So yeah, yeah it was, <laughs> every game was like a national championship. Right. No, Which that's makes it fun. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say that's cool. You're playing against the best, the best people mm -hmm. in, the, in the world, right? So who doesn't want that? Um, so, okay, so after, well, not even after Notre Dame, but we kind of touched on it a bit with uh, your youth, uh, youth women's national team days. And I saw that you were a part of some, you were part of the U20 World Cup team. Mm -hmm. uh, you're a part of some CONCACAF uh, mm -hmm. championship teams. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like, I'm, I'm going to fangirl here, but like, what, <laughs> what, what was it like playing in a World Cup? What was it like playing... Uh, CONCACAF, what's it like representing your country? What's it like meeting, you know, the your friends that are, some are moved up to the first team. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them, I'm sure, are still in the NWSL or are still playing in some regard. So what was that whole experience like? Now, you were a child, so you're, you're dealing with it as a kid, and you're obviously yeah. only looking at it from that regard. But I mean, it's still some awesome experiences that most people don't get to share in. So, share. Yeah, you don't realize when you're a kid, like I was traveling the world when I was 14, 15, 16 years old. I've been to so many different countries to just play because soccer. of this. Yeah, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm just like going over to Denmark. Like, yeah, right. Some people never like, left uh, the country. Yeah. Man, I, and I was so young and I would just like get on the plane, miss a ton of school and do this. Um, I played in two U20 World Cups, but I was a part of three youth national team cycles and I mean this was so long ago it's not talked about anymore but my U17 cycle we were the first national team or youth national team in the United States to not qualify for the World Cup mm -hmm. and I think at the time if we would have qualified we would have won the World Cup but we <laughs> we got um, beat by Canada in a shootout and Canada. Was, yes and we, we didn't end up going to the World Cup it was in Trinidad and Tobago and um, we outscored our opponents in CONCACAF 38 to zero and we didn't go to the World Cup. Yeah. And it was like really tough. I was in 10th grade and it was devastating because you put like everything you've ever worked for. You think yeah. you think life is over. Mm -hmm. And I and I couldn't like cope with it at first. I was like the World Cup. I'm not going to go to the World Cup. Like all my friends, these are my best friends, blah, blah, blah. And then you start to realize as that door closed for me, so many doors opened the following weekend, we ended up having to go to Dallas with the U17 team because they thought we were going to qualify. So they're like, we already scheduled this, this yeah. camp. We have to yeah. go. And we had to play in a friendly against Brazil in uh, the Dallas Cup okay. in the Toyota Stadium. And yeah. that was the first time the Notre Dame coach saw me play. And I had the like game of my life. Boom. And so, that, boom, I get recruited to Notre Dame because he sees me there. From that camp, I ended up getting called into the U18 national team, which was crazy because I was two years younger than all these girls anyway. And okay. then from there, I ended up working my way up to eventually those that ended up being the U20 national team a year from then. So, so because were... of that whole door slamming, yeah. I then got like recruited by Randy to go to Notre Dame, ended up like being one of the younger girls. I was the youngest starter on the U20 team that won the World Cup in Japan. And then I was able to captain the second time around for my um, second World Cup. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was, I mean, Japan was so you, you, you've so won, yeah, cool. You've won, world, you've won a World Cup. Yeah. Played I, with some of the best players in the world that are now <clears> on the <throat> national team. And, I, I mean, it's so cool for me to be like, oh, yeah, I was, me and me and Julie Johnson were center backs in the World Cup together. Like, And then yeah. Chris, Crystal Dunn was in the back line with us. Like, what is that? It's yeah. just insane. And then, I mean, my second cycle was like me, Lindsay, Rose Lavelle, Andy Sullivan, Mal Pugh. Like, we were 
just doing right. our thing. Yeah. yeah. And um, to now watch them all be on the big stage doing it, it's, I mean, I, I'm obsessed with all of them. And I actually just got off the phone with Lindsay and Jay and Campbell. They just got into camp for the national team. For we national. Just on a three, yeah. They, they're like quarantining in their hotel. They're bored already. I'm like, you guys just got there. They're like, okay, like, are we going to do this every day? Right. <laughs> all right. Well, yeah, so, sure. We can yeah. keep FaceTiming. And, um. <laughs> and because the NWSL season is ended now, I'm guessing a lot of the, the main people in the camp are NWSL probably the the ones that just left like Alex Morgan and and uh Sam Mewis and them are do you know if they're if they were they're invited? overseas yeah they're still staying yeah it's just easier I think yeah with them just being overseas oh that makes sense are you ready to take your game to the next level trust the process and sign up for no stress midwest training today at www.nostressmidwest.com slash training no Stress Midwest primarily offers training for soccer players on the individual, group, and team settings of all ages and skill sets. Our training is customized for the player, and our goal in doing that is to continue to grow the love of the game, build a personal desire to want to develop, and create the chance and choice for the player to play at the next level. We have developed a unique solution here at No Stress Midwest Training, showing our clients that you can have fun while still getting better. By creating a unique training environment customized to the player, we feel that not only are we able to get the most out of the individual by creating a no stress environment, but we are also teaching them fundamentals that they can carry off the field and apply in their everyday life. Visit our website at www.nostressmidwest.com backslash training and sign up for your first session today. Um, so, okay. So before we leave that topic, is there any like one memory that sticks out the most that you feel comfortable sharing? Um, with kind of like my whole youth my yeah whole like youth. just while representing uh like the u.s going to those world cups going to the Concacaf, traveling all that stuff whether it's like a, a a dance party that you have you know i i know that coaching girls the dance parties that that happen are epic um, oh yeah talent shows that i honestly am so impressed with some of my kids about um but those are the things that stick out to me over like the actual soccer is those memories you make off the pitch so mm -hmm. any anyone that that sticks out sticks out a lot or is it all kind of just lumped in a good memory well it's crazy i mean it was like 10 plus years of my life doing it with the same girls over yeah. and over i mean i was with them once or twice a month for 10 years so the, the amount of memories it's incredible but the one thing that we did over the years as we started to get older so we would like prank each other like a crazy okay. crazy amount and okay. as we got older the pranks just got like absurd like yeah. there would be i remember my first u20 camp ever i'm obviously like petrified and all i want to do is make the roster for Concacaf for qualifying and i'm like right. this is my first camp how am i gonna squeak onto this roster if i'm not focused <laughs> and Lindsay aran and morgan bryan <laughs> and brianne heberlin they uh like would come in at 12 a.m and dump a bucket of ice water on my head on my bed i'm like what are we doing mm -hmm. or like we're in japan for pre-world cup camp mm -hmm. and they think it's funny to buy these like dried up sardines and like put them in my bed so i'm uh, going to bed at night and I'm, like I, I like lift up my comforter and i'm like what who is messing with my sleep again i was like i have one rule don't mess with my sleep didn't yeah. we learn this from the ice water um yeah. so the the pranks just got like absurd all around but right. it was but that's hilarious good, you always have to like have your eyes open for sure and that brings you all closer, right? Is it's those those things. Now, granted, you waking up in the middle of the night with ice water dumped on you probably is it. Is it? It's funny now though. That's yeah, for sure. it has but to. at the time, I was like, "Excuse me, Where, I yep. need my sleep. This is not funny." But like, there's been harmless ones too. Like for one sure. time, I like found my underwear in the freezer in the hotel. I was like, "Okay, okay well, that's like who's there's doing that. this? What's yeah. going on?" <laughs> there's but, that. But a lot of a lot of girls started to get involved. It like started really small and then it started to, to grow. everyone had to watch their back. Yeah. 
Now, were were coaching or coaches involved in any of the pranks, or was it just amongst oh the players? God, no, they no. It was just the for the most part. It was just players because they yeah. were absurd. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we've gone through you've gone through your youth days. We've gone through college. We now get to you being drafted fifth mm -hmm. overall, right? Mm -hmm. By uh, who is it? Fifth overall by Houston. Mm -hmm. So one by who. Their coach at the time was Randy, my college coach. No. <laughs> so I keep like recycling my coaches, which is awesome. That's funny. Mm -hmm. I know. So, as I'm saying this out loud, it kind of sounds like I've only made it because I keep recycling my coaches, but I don't, I, I don't think that's No, right. hey. I think I like. I don't want you. I mean, you're yeah, not. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't think he was like doing me a favor by driving right. me. And like same with Paul bringing me to the courage. Like I don't think Paul was doing me any favors. Like, oh yeah, I feel bad for you or I like you as a person. Like yeah. he's. I, I feel like I got to give myself some credit here. So yeah, I did get drafted by Randy, but I actually was hurt at the time. I had hip surgery like a week before that and I was in a wheelchair. So mm. I wasn't at the draft. Ah, okay. Um, I was going to ask yeah, you. Yeah, and I was so nervous that like, I was like, oh my God, no one's going to want to pick me up. I can't even walk. So yeah. I didn't even watch the draft. I like started looking at my phone and my phone blew up and I was like, oh, oh yeah. I guess I got drafted. <laughs> like, turn on the great. TV real quick. Yeah. No, I was. I didn't even turn it on. I was just like, "Oh, Houston, wonderful!" Like, right. thanks, Randy. Um, but yeah, it was kind of a rough first year for me. I got cleared really fast. I healed. I, I would say I healed fast from my injury, and I got cleared really fast. It was supposed to be four to six month recovery with my hip. Mm -hmm. um, but then I was like not fit and not agile. And anyone coming back from a big time surgery would understand. Like, you can't just jump into playing especially a step up in the nwsl i think right. my first 90 minutes was against the spirit against i was like mark and crystal done and i'm like oh, okay Freaking that was flying up and down yeah there. so it my first year definitely taught me that i if i wanted to make it in the league and be a pro i had to go be a pro and i think my first off season really that challenged me and definitely allowed me to sit back and reflect and say like, okay, if you're going to do this, you're going to do this. And I started being a 24 seven pro, which and it's definitely and, helped. And go into that. What you, you said that if you want to be a pro, you got to be a pro. Well, what, what, what all goes into that, right? Like, what does that mean for the people that, that don't know what it means to be a pro? Yeah, I was someone that like ate whatever I wanted in college and high school. And I think that was one thing if I just like changed my diet, mm -hmm. uh, that would help a ton. I had to like get better sleep, maybe watch more film, start like scouting my opponents and um, stretching before practice, prehab, um, like recovery is huge, ice baths or Normatec pants or whatever, massage, like anything, that stuff I didn't really ever need. Yeah. Think about like when you're young, you play two games in one day or in college, yeah. you play a Friday, Sunday schedule. This it's like you play one ready. game and you're like, I'm out for four days. I can't yeah. even walk. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, as I got older, I had to really take care of my body. I had to get fit and, and I am not the fastest player ever, but like I wanted to come in that next year and kind of like crush the fitness mm -hmm. test. Um, and I did, and I was super proud of that. And I don't know. Yeah, I just there's a lot that goes into it, and it's yeah, it's a lot, but it's your job, and if it's your dream, then you you do you're, it. You're gonna do it. Yeah. You do it. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> I think that's a really good point that you brought up. Is you were you're selected fifth overall, right? So if you're getting drafted, right, that that means you're obviously not bad, regardless of who you who picks you, right? You're not bad, um, and you had a very uh, decorated youth career so someone in your position that gets to the top and you get there and you're like oh shoot i've got a it whole, wasn't enough. i got more stuff i got to do and yeah it's it wasn't enough yeah and to be able for you to see that and and understand that ego aside like hey apparently I'm, i still got to do more you know what i've done isn't good enough so how do i get it to another level and that's all intrinsic motivation Right, that's you going out and saying, I want this because I want to be in better shape. Mm -hmm. I want to pass the fitness test. And I, I think that's that's commendable. And I think a lot of youth players who are listening um, can take note to this, that it's sometimes natural talent isn't going to get it there. And what is it that you're going to do 
off the field that, that makes that difference. So um, Yeah, and there's one thing I do want to say. There's so many girls in the league that didn't get drafted that year or even like these past few years. There was a girl last year that didn't get drafted and she became – she tried out for – what was their team name? I'll call them Seattle. Whatever Seattle's name was at the time, right? right. Last year, yeah. and became the rookie of the year, Bethany Balser. She didn't even get drafted, I believe. Someone can fact check me on that. I think I one of the announcers just said that to me, okay. or to me on the TV. On the, yeah, on TV. Um, um, but there was a girl my year, she 2016, didn't get drafted, went on to make the Western New York Flash, and they won the championship that year, and she played. So. And then she got called into the national team. So there is no one way to do it. There's no yeah. one way to make it. And your journey is going to be like all over the place, a roller coaster ride. And you kind of have to just like stay level headed and stay driven. And like you said, intrinsic motivation. Like if you want it, just go after it and put in the work and do the extra. And it'll be worth it whether you end up like falling short of your goal. Like people say, what? Reach for the stars if you. I always what is that I, saying? I, I know I know what you're talking about, but I never know. I never know how. Reach, it, is it reach for the moon if you miss? If you, you fall miss, the stars, you land or, on the stars or something, or something. Yeah, something like that. I get where you're going. Just like shoot big, and regardless, you're you're gonna be able to look yourself in the mirror, put your head on the pillow, and be like, I did my best, and I enjoyed myself, and that's all that matters. If I had fun and I got better and grew in some capacity, I went for it, and that's. I actually, this is funny, I said this in the game yesterday, one of the girls playing in front of me in the midfield was getting a little bit tired. I'm like, okay, yeah, I know this is painful, but the pain, the guilt and pain of quitting is worse. <laughs> literally it's saying it up, that in the game. Suck it up. <laughs> I was oh, like, okay, okay, it's going to be worse if you don't do yep. it. So I'm like, do it. Like, yep. just do it. Trust me. It's yep. it, mentally, it's so much worse knowing you didn't give it your all and didn't try. Mm -hmm. And that's like really important for people to remember. At least for me, I'm like, if I like have to skimp out on a workout one day, I'm like, oh, that's so annoying. I would have yeah. rather done the workout and like failed miserably than not, not tried it. it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay. So after Houston, you were there for a short time and then now you were, then you were assigned to the courage. Mm -hmm. now, that was because, was that the coaching change as well? So Houston, I was there for two years Yeah. and then they brought in a new coach who I guess for whatever reason was not, she was just like, you are only a center back and we have a ton of those, which I didn't agree with. And that was not true. And I will say that it was not true. We, they didn't have a lot of center back depth. She was trying to move people there that weren't center back. Yeah, yeah. Um, and because she didn't think that she, I'm very versatile as a player. That's like one of the things people know about me. I can kind of be stuck anywhere on the field and it'll be fine. She mm -hmm. did not feel that way. So I was not, of too much value to her so i ended up getting waived and then i uh, i was not in a good place i almost was like about to hang up the boots yeah and for sure i was like what am i doing i just got waived from a team that like isn't really doing that great in the league mm -hmm. and this is embarrassing i was mortified like fifth overall pick getting cut from a team like it was just too much yeah. so then i ended up a couple weeks went by I was like, oh yeah, I'm probably just gonna like call it. And Paul Riley, my coach now, my club coach, was just checking in. And was like, how are you doing? Or how are things going? And yeah. I texted him this like essay and was like, I'm not playing anymore, basically. And he was right. like, I have a spot for you. Boom. And I called him and I was like, I'm actually in the airport heading home. Like, what do you mean? He's like, we can get you here in a few days. Like, stay patient. Whatever. That's awesome. Um, yeah, came here. Played a couple days, got signed. There was one contract left. I got it and ended up winning back-to-back -back championships. That's awesome. Yeah. So with all of the trophies that you've amassed over your playing career, which one would you say stands out to you the most? Oh, and okay. what reason? And for what reason? I have two. Okay. Sorry, I can't pick one. Um, the World Cup in Japan winning that for me obviously winning a world cup saying you're the best in the world not many people can do that um and the team i was on i mean you look at that roster you'd be like holy cow that's a squad yeah. um and it was awesome because it wasn't just like a straightforward path like we barely made it out of the group stage we kind of like blew it a little bit where we we like had a win a tie and a 3-0 loss and we squeaked out 
on a wild card got in and like had to play Guilty. we played like north korea and nigeria and then we had to replay germany who beat us 3-0 and we ended up beating them in the final for redemption so it was super difficult as a squad and the adversity we faced was unreal but then for me as i was the youngest player and I was that girl that was like in and out and in and out of the lineup but during practice. He kept doing that switching thing where the coach like it was it me or her or whatever. And so I was actually not a starter for the beginning of the World Cup. And by game three and a half, I was. So by cool. the end of group stage. Yeah. End of group stage, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I played in the second game and the third game and then every minute beyond that which is awesome. And as a center back, it was cool. I mean, they don't sub center backs. I actually had to sub in. Julie Ertz ended up getting hurt. I just was like, oh gosh, I actually have to go in. And I guess I did well enough that they were like, oh, I guess we'll just keep her in for the rest of the day. Yeah. Not doing too bad. So for me to show like at my young Mm -hmm. age, like it didn't matter at the time. And that I like kind of like was ready to step up and be what the the team needed. And Mm -hmm. yeah. That was it was cool for me, and then my second choice would be my 2019 championship, in, and it was also last year. Um, I just thought it was really special, and I I think it was really cool because the year before that, the courage just like dominated the league, absolutely yeah. like domination station in every aspect, and we broke every record possible and like won the treble and all this stuff. But the the 2019 championship wasn't like that and it was like there was a point in the season where we were like are we gonna make playoffs right and so for me i got to play a lot more i felt like i was contributing a lot more and um we ended up coming out on top eventually anyway but like same thing i think the ones that are more special for me are the the championships where i face adversity first and then i show i and we my team and i we show that we can kind of overcome that and those are the more special ones for me for than sure. just like winning all the time i'm like yeah that's cool that's great but like when you have to grind it out it's just like a different kind of you appreciate sweet. it more mm-hmm. you appreciate yeah it more. yep mm-hmm. i agree okay um and then so coming into the the 2019 right so we just you're coming off back-to-back nwsl championships we're going into 2020 and then freaking covid comes and just screws up a lot of things um Obviously, all seasons, all games, sports were were shut down. They each league was responsible for kind of their own startup and and restart and testing mm-hmm. and all that. Uh, so during that downtime, right? Let's just uh, probably March one. Were you able to get any games? Any? No, games? we no had a week, league? one week of preseason. I can just like start rolling and talk about this. Yeah, it's I have a pretty interesting. So for me, after 2019, we won that championship, and I was feeling really good. I to to get playing time on a team as good as mine is like very difficult to do, and I was proud of myself. And I, but I was so hungry for more at that yeah. point, and I was like, okay, well, it's gonna be an Olympic year next year. You're gonna have to like step it up even more. Mm-hmm. And so I now side season. note, when you say it's gonna be an Olympic year, explain. That means basically that that any players on my team that were going to be in the Olympics, they're going to be traveling all the time in and out with their national teams and they're going to be missing a ton of games. Mm -hmm. And that's really a time to kind of like make your mark. And that in 2019, it was a World Cup year. So it was the same situation. And I got to play a ton. Like I did not, like it was awesome for me. And I felt like really proud and I was thankful. And I was like, I'm going to have to repeat that. (laughs) But not only do I want to repeat that, but I want to, like beat players out i want to show that i'm valuable and that when they do come back that we got to figure out how to get me on the field as well um so i was super motivated when like when before when you said intrinsic motivation i all i thought of was 2020s off season yeah um so i stayed here in raleigh and i like when i say i couldn't have trained harder i i don't even have words i was training every day i was with the men's players here for from ncfc training there was a a first it was just me and one other guy and then it was like me and two of them and then me and three of them as they started to roll in for their preseason we were playing like pickup on tuesdays thursdays it was crazy and i was at the facilities from 7 30 in the morning to like 1 p.m every single day for eight weeks except like i had a wedding one weekend besides that every single day and 
that's a lot. And yeah. once the men started their preschool, <clears throat> I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Right. I was out there every single day. They're like, are you still going to go at 7.30? I was like, yeah, I'm not just going to stop going at 7.30 just because you guys are starting right. practice. I'm going to do this because I want to do this. And I was like trying to prove it to them that I, I'm not just doing it for them. I was yeah. doing this because I want to say that I did everything I can to be prepared. And I was because I wasn't playing pickup anymore with them, I had to start running more because I needed yeah. to keep that it's fitness. Popular. So I was just like cones and lines up back suicides, you name it, I ran it. Like it was lunacy. And then we got into preseason March 4th or whatever, whatever it was, March 9th, I don't remember. We trained a week before COVID. I didn't even know what coronavirus was at the right. time. And right. I was like feeling myself. Like I was like, okay, this is gonna be it yeah. for me oh, yeah. boom coronavirus hits we think we just have one week off next thing you know they push it back a week they kept giving a date yeah. and then pushing yeah. it back so you're like training at the facilities at first but like i was only with my roommate but then you start to like get discouraged next thing i know i mean this is a blur i blacked this time out in my life but next thing i know it's like may yeah. so we did this from march 15th ish till may 20 something like it was crazy and because of how hard i worked during the off season me personally and how good i felt for that first week i was like well don't let down now yeah well, don't let down keep, now yeah, but keep... how do you say that to yourself for like eight plus weeks especially when then you you're dealing with coronavirus and then you're dealing the gym closes yeah. so how am i going to get my lifts in then the field closed so then i start going at 6 30 in the morning to sneak on before the employees and construction workers get there like in the dark with my roommate but then i was like okay well i always do more than everyone else so then i was getting there even an hour before my roommate was just to like make sure i was warming up stretching like prehabbing and i would do like 120s before she showed up and then we would run and then we would train and like it was and then we'd come home and lift in our living room like right out there we would lift with like kettlebells and we had like one dumbbell that was too heavy we like almost broke our wrists, like trying to lift it. I was like, I'm not using this. Um, so it was a lot of like body weight stuff. And it was just, like our living room turned into our gym. And that yeah. was just like the worst. Every time I looked in the living room, I was like, Ugh, Ugh. I don't even want to be here. Bad memories. Yeah. And, but then it just kept getting pushed back. And I'm like, what am I working for? What am I doing here? There was days where I would look up at the sky and just be like, what is going on? Screaming. And yeah. my roommate's like, are you good? I'm like, no, I'm not good today. Like yeah. I hung on and I said if we are not practicing by June I am going to lose my mind luckily we started five days before June hit or I would have I would have absolutely I think I did lose my mind but I would have like actually lost my mind um and then we started practicing we started training groups of two me so me and my roommate but then we had other groups of two on the field next to us so we'd be like hey guys we're all gonna do this at the same time but not near each other right yeah but then it turned into groups of eight and then it turned into our first day as a squad. We actually like played full field, which was so fun. And then when we was, had preseason that? number two. When that was, was your first training as a team. May or late, late May, maybe or June, like early, early June. Um, you like one March, Saturday. You went from March to end of May without effectively being with your team. Yep, running myself into the ground, which is something I already did for eight weeks. Right. So when I go to that field, I'm always just like. Oh my god, I've been here every day for like nine months. Like I look around and I'm like, oh no. Part of then, it. So then we we prepare. At that point, we started training as a team. We were preparing for Utah to be in the bubble, mm -hmm. but then we come back from the bubble and we have three weeks of not knowing what we're gonna do. I'm like, do I dare go back to that field? Right. Do, <laughs> can I do it? And and to be fair, I didn't. I needed mentally. I was like, I'm yeah. at the point where I'm like, I'm. I'm fit enough where I can get through, but I was like, I don't know how to do that again. Like that was, that was like one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. And I'm sure it was hard for every single athlete. Not, it's just like the, the unknown of like, okay, I'm trying to push myself. I've always pushed myself and it's always been easy to do that. But I think it's very easy for athletes because they have something that they have to be ready for. But yeah. when you're pushing yourself, when you don't, you don't have a date or you don't have like if someone said, well, just, oh yeah, you're going to play soccer in a year from now, I'd be like, okay, well, I'm not going to start running today. Right. Like you don't have anything remotely close. It's really hard to get out there and 
do and it do. and like pats on the back for everyone that did do it and did stay ready and did what they were supposed to it's it was just like terrible i mean what was it like for your girls like, a student yeah. that's struggling a little bit with the hybrid and virtual learning and looking to get just a little more help academically or are you a parent that has a child who's struggling to keep that same level of discipline and rigor that they had in the classroom at home if any of these apply to you check out no stress midwest education an academic tutoring service where we offer both in-person and virtual tutoring. One of the things that separates us from others is that all of our tutors are board certified educators in Kansas and Missouri in a variety of specialty topics and familiar with the latest curriculum in school districts around the metro area. We are passionate about helping students achieve their goals in the classroom and also committed to helping students build the necessary skills and tools they will need in the future to succeed on their own. Our team follows the latest guidelines from the CDC. We require masks for all in-person tutoring to protect both the student and the tutor. Our tutors will either travel to your home or meet at a predetermined location to conduct all in-person tutoring sessions. All we need is a space for learning and we're ready to go. At No Stress Midwest, we truly believe in developing the well-rounded student athlete. No Stress Midwest does not tell you what to think, but teaches you how to think. No Stress Midwest Education, an academic tutoring service. For more information, visit www.nostressmidwest.com backslash education. Yeah, I, I, I was gonna say, <clears throat> unfortunately, for for most uh, most people, we we are not athletes, so we have to go to the gym and and get oh, so our, it's normal or get ourselves motivated <laughs> just to like be in shape. Ah. Uh, it's I know it's a crazy world you got to transition to, uh, but but no the my girls we had tryouts we had a week of tryouts we had a week of training then they go off for spring break. And then they just never like, it sounds scary, but they never came back. And I was talking to a few of the, the girls uh, a few weeks ago, they were at my boys training and we we're just chatting about that experience and like how crazy it was. Like we were, I mean, we had a really solid team. It was finally like, I, I was there for two years now. So I, I felt like I knew all the girls. It was, I feel like this year was going to be different. And then that happened. So my you know my high school training my high school season's done um they closed down the field so i'm having to like tell the kids like hey you can use the field but don't tell them that i said you could use it yeah like sneak on yeah yeah like just go on you'll be okay and trying to get them to to organize their own pickups and and all that so eventually it got to a point where our boys and girls uh once a week were going to the field and they were just playing the giant scrimmage um which I thought was was really cool to see them get after it and know that like, hey, we're not just because coach isn't making us do it. We still want to get out here and do it. Um, so, yeah, I, I thought that was that, that was really cool. And and now we're just kind of dealing with the back end of COVID as, as you're going through it as well. Um, I mean, the the precautions you have to take during the game, during trainings and all mm -hmm. that. Uh, hopefully by the start of your next season, things will, will be back to a, a somewhat normal, but it's crazy how, how everyone's had to adjust and adapt to, to this. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's cool though. I'm glad you were able to, to find that motivation in you. And, and that's big because most people aren't like that. I'll be honest yeah. with you. People do not have that drive to get to any place at 630 or 7.30 or 8.30 yeah. in the morning. Um, so that that's awesome. I, I didn't know that, but I think that's really, really cool to hear. Well, thanks. Yeah, um, it, was, it was crazy <clears throat> times. My roommate and I, we look back and we're just like, oh my gosh, this gives us the heebie-jeebies to even think about doing any of the runs or like fitness that we were doing. And I mean, oh, that's why like, I can't even like talk about it. I'm like, ah, I hate it. And it was such but a it was worth it. time because like on top of whatever it is that you were doing, right. And what I was doing, 
the world like people like weren't outside like it yeah. i mean it was like i can remember like walking into a grocery store and there's like nobody in there and i yeah. just remember it was, and for months it was like i'm like man. yeah we were like when is this over yeah every week like, you're like oh it's gonna stop it's yeah. gonna stop but no one knew mm -hmm. if you would have told me in march okay this is gonna be going on until october maybe i could have like prepared differently and been like all right it's gonna be like this for a while not like oh get my hopes up every week oh yep. i'm getting let down oh get my hopes up yep. oh no yeah like it's and I, I mean we still have no idea no right and, and i was gonna say and let's be honest even if someone told you it, it would go until october would you have believed it back in march oh no i definitely wouldn't have believed it i thought this was just like a short-term thing and <laughs> yeah. you know here we are still talking about it yeah but i will say sports in any capacity does bring some type of normalcy. So if anyone's like, when we're able to be on the field, like, no one should take it for granted. Even wow. if you're having a bad practice or a bad game or a bad day, it's like, okay, well, at least I'm out here. And yep. I have to, sometimes I have to tell myself that I'm like, okay, whatever coach yells at you, at least you're out here playing. Cause you could yep. be stuck inside. So I hope people keep that in mind during this whole thing. Very true. So Carrie, I want to get into some generic questions okay um now for the listeners i have i coach a few younger girls teams uh u10 flash fc shout outs and uh, mission united fc shout outs to them as well <laughs> and uh they've submitted a bunch of questions to me i told them i was going to be interviewing some really awesome ladies that play soccer and they were excited so uh, we've kind of gone through some of the questions where, you know, some of them might not be, uh, might not work, such as like the, who do you think is better, the Messi or Alex Morgan one? Um, <laughs> Ty. Right. But I, I think there are a lot of good questions in here. Um, and just to see kind of what, what goes on in their head. And, and I think it's, yeah. Um, so yeah, let's just kind of go through a few of these. Uh, it won't be, I don't need too long of a response more so like rapid fire yeah yeah kind of like a yeah. rapid fire i like that say all no right. more all right how many soccer games do you play in a year would you say 24 24 games okay were you a good soccer player in third grade yeah i was pretty good in third grade yeah was that one of your your highlight years the third grade year no but I, I, that's when I first started playing travel and I was like, oh yeah, I can do this. I can do it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what tough roadblocks have you faced while playing soccer and how did you get through them? I think one of the biggest ones is my injury. Um, and then I, I, as I mentioned before, getting cut yeah. from teams, I think those are two huge things that pretty much any soccer player will face at some point in their career. And like I told you, some of the, my favorite trophies and championships are the ones that come after adversity. Mm -hmm. So if you do hit adversity, whether that's being cut or injured and you come out of it stronger, it's going to be so much more worth yeah. it. Sorry, yeah. that's not a rapid fire answer to that question, but it's OK. Sorry. Uh, uh, do you think it's fair that girls don't make as much money as boys in the professional world? No, I don't. I mean, I wish I wish it was equal because I want some cash, but it's yeah. hard. I mean, that's a complex question. I always tell yep. people when they ask me about that, I'm like, it really is like complex. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, do, would I like to be paid what an MLS player makes? Absolutely. And I'm going to just leave that at that. Absolutely. Because yeah. just to hear what th they do the same job as us and they get X, Y and Z more money. I'm like, no, I'm doing the same thing as you. Mm -hmm. But obviously there's a lot more that goes into it. So I'm crossing my fingers that one day like logistically and financially, everything could be sorted out on the ownership end where we would be able to get paid the same amount. Dig it. Um, how many practices or how many times do you practice a week and how long is a practice typically? Four to five times a week. Um, some days we have double days and practices like anywhere from an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. Okay. Short um, and sweet. What's your... Uh pre-game meal and is, is it okay to eat ice cream no ice cream no ice i saw that question and i was like who's eating ice cream no, no ice, ice cream, cream <laughs> um pre-game meal varies depending on the, the game or the time of day i've never really like locked down a pre-game meal to be honest so i can't really i mean i try to have some like protein and vegetables okay maybe some carbs so i have energy um do you or did you play any other sports while growing up 
other than soccer and there's yes. so many ones i danced for 10 years i was a dancer okay um it was so much fun and actually like kept me pretty much injury free because i was so like flexible and i was stretching and stuff i also ran track in high school in eighth grade um and i played like lacrosse a little bit too right. okay. so, yeah i did a bunch of sports it was fun I, i'm like a total sports girl uh why did you become a professional soccer player instead of something else? And when did you know it was your thing? I knew I wanted to do this when I was like five years old. Okay. Um, I wrote it down on like a goal sheet of mine in Girl Scouts. So I really knew. Um, and I love it so much. Nothing else really like was anything I was passionate about like this. So, yeah. Um, let's see what what well we kind of talked about your training regimen on on how you stay in shape but uh <laughs> yeah. what kind of goals do you set for yourself every season or do you set goals for yourself every season so my this is an interesting question my goals have changed as i've gone throughout my career in the league and my goals used to be very like start in a certain amount of games or do this or do that or be able to do this on the field and now my goals have kind of shifted to the Point where they're just two easy things to smile every day on the field and to grow every day on the field those are my goals i dig um, it yeah well just kind of like oh professional athlete you're just trying to like smile and grow and like yeah whatever if i can walk off the field every single day saying i was smiling and i grew it's a good day then i'm doing my thing here yeah it's a good day all right now mm -hmm. let's get to uh your dream five aside okay this is so gonna we're be gonna so hard. have you pick and this is something that i did in season one um but carrie you're going to pick you plus four people that you've played with in your life that you'd want and then we're going to pick another four of people maybe you <gasps> excuse me maybe people you haven't played with um but you aspire that you aspire to <laughs> okay so me and my i have played with them Oh, I gotta yeah. pick Lindsay Horan. Okay, so I'm gonna pick me, All right. Lindsay, um, Rose Lavelle. Mm -hmm. uh, can I go like international? Mm -hmm. Um, any like even like a when you were on your third grade team and you knew that you wanted to be a pro, if there was someone on that team that you that you'd like to shout out and put on your team, you can do that as well. Anyone oh you've ever played with? I should have prepared a little bit better. Um, I would say someone I really like in the NWSL is Jess Fishlock. Um, and do we have a goalie? Cause we're at four. Oh, no, I got to pick a goalie. Got to have a goalie. Um, well, I got to go with my girl, Jane Campbell. All she right. for Houston. Yeah. Boom. Okay. So we've got you. Lindsay, Rose, Jess, and Jane. Mm -hmm. Now let's pick. What a squad! I know. <laughs> now anyone that you haven't played with that you just you know maybe would want to. Who do we okay. got? Okay. So I want to put Hope Solo or Tim Howard as my goalkeeper. Hope or Tim, right? I mean, both are. Uh, I can't go wrong. Very solid, um, man. And then, sorry, Jane, I, you got the axe. Um, and then I want to keep. I want to keep Lindsay and Rose. It's funny because, like, a couple years ago, I did an interview. Actually, six or seven years ago, I did something like this, and I picked Lindsay and Rose. And here I am now, and still picking Lindsay and Rose because they're still two of the best in the world. Yeah. So I'm gonna keep them too. Okay. And. I'll spice it up. I'll I'll put um, Sam Kerr oh. in there. Ooh, Sorry, cool. Jess. But I play. I mean, it's just like the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Oh man, those that's a that's a squad right there. I mean, if I could just like semi hold it down in defense, I would let the other let three everyone just else go just do their do, thing. Yeah. 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 I love it. So, Carrie, I want to thank you um, for being a podcast guest. This is actually went by really smooth. Um, I think we were able to cover a lot of great information. I've been mesmerized by your shirt uh, for, oh. the, for the hour. I love it. I made this shirt, by the way. I made Did this. You? I tie-dyed this. Oh, yes. man. You're so talented. I know. Thanks. Okay. Quarantine, you know. Yeah. So. You just wear it. 
<laughs> learn how to do some, <laughs> some new things. Um, so Carrie, I want to thank you. Um, it's been it's been great uh, for the listeners. Uh, Carrie has given us a wealth of information in this hour. Um, and to end things, one, I'd like to ask for a, a, a signed jersey if possible. And then I will shoot you over some, uh, some no stress Midwest gear and we can keep this party moving. Sound good? Yeah. All right, Carrie, thank you again for, uh, for being on. This is Brian with season two now, episode one of the no stress Midwest podcast. Thank you all for listening. One sec.